When I was seven, I was obsessed with world domination. My parents dug this gem up from our old hard drive a couple months ago. And as you can see, I did some high quality scheming and diagramming on Microsoft Paint. You might look at this and think it was from some maniacal child supervillain wannabe. And while my parents would probably say you're right, but thankfully, I'm not here today to talk about my success as a supervillain. So fast forward several years to when I was 13. I was, it was summertime, and I was playing the piano one day, just relaxing, plunking out Scott Joplin's pineapple rag. Obviously, this is not me when I was actually 13, but it was the same room, same piano, just I was a little bigger. At some point during my playing, I noticed this faint, annoying buzzing sound coming from the banjo hanging on the wall next to me. I realized that when I was playing certain chords on the piano, it was causing the banjo strings to resonate in response. Cool, right? I thought so. Being a young, budding scientist, I was just thinking through the physics behind this, when suddenly a really crazy thought occurred to me. What if I could take this principle that I'm observing here with the piano and the banjo strings and somehow use music to detect buried landmines? <laughs> what? A million thoughts started racing through my head. I mean, come on, Marion, you're 13. You're not old enough to have legitimately good ideas. You're absolutely insane. And this, this is crazy. This would never work. I was being pounded with reasons to just drop the thought and go back to playing ragtime. But at that moment, instead of dropping the thought, I remembered something my cousin Katie had taught me several years earlier. She liked to call it the philosophy of yes. Now, the philosophy of yes is the idea that when you are presented with an opportunity, it can be really easy to say no right away. You might think to yourself, I'm not good enough, not smart enough, not lucky enough for that to happen. The chances of me actually getting what I want out of this opportunity are pretty much zero, so it's not worth it for me to try. And yeah, you might be right that your chances are slim. But what we often forget in these moments is that by saying no, you already know the answer. It's no. On the flip side, if you were to say yes, then there is a chance, however minuscule, that something great could happen. By saying yes, you're opening up the doors to untold possibilities. And yeah, the numbers will probably be against you. But what's the absolute worst that could happen? You end up with a no. The same no you would have gotten if you hadn't said yes at all. So back to me at playing the piano, this crazy idea having just conked me in the head, and every fiber of my brain telling me that my chances of this actually working, of using music to detect buried landmines, are pretty much zero. But instead of dropping it as a fleeting thought, I decided to follow the philosophy of yes and do something about it. I decided to say yes to the crazy. Well, that one yes changed my life. And lo and behold, three years later, I built this, a simple working prototype of a device that uses seismoacoustics, or sound waves and ground vibrations together to detect buried landmines. At this point, you probably have lots of questions. <laughs> Why on earth? Would a 13-year-old be thinking about landmines and make that connection and then be motivated to do the research? This whole thing sprung from several intersecting factors in my life, so let's rewind a little ways, well back before the whole piano banjo incident. When my older sister, who is actually here today, was in high school, she did her own research and got to go to all of these really cool science fairs across the country. And she would always come back from these events raving about the people she met, the things she learned, and the food. It was the food that really caught my attention. <laughs> Frankly, I wanted fancy science fair lunches too. But I knew to get the fancy science fair lunches, I'd have to do a science fair project, a, a good one. And well, frankly, I was out of good ideas, so I moved on with my life. Then that summer, the summer I was 13, a group of international scientists working on a holographic radar device for detecting buried landmines came to my house and I got to play cards and music with them and had a blast. And while they were there, they talked about their work. 
what exactly they were doing, and why it was important. And that's when I learned the gruesome truth about landmines. Every 20 minutes, someone somewhere in the world is killed or injured by a landmine. There are over 100 million landmines in the ground, infesting roughly 70 countries. And most of their victims are innocent civilians, including women and children. Some types of landmines, namely the butterfly mine, are often mistaken for toys by children who pick them up, maybe bring them home or to school to play with their friends, where they're set off and cause devastating loss. Landmines can remain active in the ground decades after a war is over, and they can't tell the difference between a soldier and a civilian. I heard a story once on a documentary about a man who planted landmines in his own country during wartime, meaning to protect his family. But many years later, his own son was out walking in the woods and was killed by a landmine that he had placed. And as horrible as all of this is, death and injury aren't even the only issues. Buried landmines can block off entire areas of fertile land that could otherwise be used for farming, to feed the local communities, and to stimulate the economy. Essentially, landmines stifle the productivity of already impoverished countries. I was hearing all this as a naive American 13-year-old, and it struck me hard, especially because I realized that my family in Mozambique had to live with this threat every day, and I was completely oblivious to it. It made me feel helpless, and I wished more than anything that I could do something, that I could get involved. But what on earth could I possibly do as just some young, inexperienced kid? Several weeks after that, I heard those buzzing banjo strings, and that's when all these crazy, jumbled thoughts in my head clicked. Using music to detect buried landmines. It seemed like the perfect way to combine my lifelong love of music with this newfound passion for the landmine issue. And furthermore, I had my science fair project idea, so if things worked out, hello, fancy lunches. <laughs> of course, like I said, I had no clue if this crazy idea would work. But I followed the philosophy of yes and ended up spending three years working on various projects to further my idea. In my final project, I built this device out of the frame of a scrap metal detector I rescued from a dumpster. The science behind it is actually incredibly simple. It works in a two-part system with a seismic shaker sending seismic waves through the ground, causing any nearby landmines to resonate. Then this device, which has two microphones attached to the bottom, sweeps above the ground, recording the sound via the two microphones onto a small amplifier. Then one of these microphone recordings is inverted and mixed with the other one to perform noise cancellation, leaving you with a single waveform. Now when the two microphones pass over a buried mine that is resonating, a characteristic pattern appears in the sound. This happens because, breaking it down, when each individual microphone passes over the buried landmine, it's picking up that resonance, so there's a swell in the sound. But there's a point in the middle where the two microphones are equidistant from the resonating mine, picking up the same resonance, so the noise cancels almost completely, and you get this sort of null in the sound, indicating the presence of a landmine and allowing for its detection. When I said yes all those years ago, I never expected this. <laughs> this was a perfect example of how following the philosophy of yes can sometimes, against all odds, lead to something great. I actually ended up using the philosophy of yes several other times throughout my project in smaller ways. Um, for instance, in my final project, when I was starting it and looking for high sensitivity microphones to use, I knew nothing about microphones, and furthermore, I had no idea how I was going to afford the expensive equipment I needed. But I decided to take it one step at a time. I did some research and found this random microphone company online and shot them an email, not really expecting them to pay any attention to a lowly 15-year-old with a crazy idea, but holding on to the philosophy of yes and hoping for at least a response, maybe. I was shocked when I actually got an email back and they wanted to organize a conference call to talk about my idea further. The biggest shock came when after that conference call,
they decided to lend me, for no money at all, a pair of their nicest, incredibly expensive, high-sensitivity microphones to use in my project. And if that weren't far more than enough, one of the members of the company soon became a really wonderful mentor to me throughout the project. The moral of this story is, even if you're just some kid, follow the philosophy of yes, and don't be afraid to contact the experts for help. And experts, don't be afraid to say yes to their crazy ideas. You never know to what heights your support could lead them. I also ended up using the philosophy of yes when I applied to things like the Davidson Fellowship and the Intel Science Talent Search. I didn't think I stood any chance at all. But again, I knew that if I said no, the answer would already be no. So I decided to say yes and apply and chase the immensely improbable. And as a result of those yeses, I got to go to so many amazing events all over the country and meet so many incredible people, including here at TEDx Teen. I never expected to end up here amongst such an inspirational group of young people. I never really expected any of the exciting things that happened because of my project. Originally, I just wanted some good food, and somehow I ended up here. Also, if anyone was wondering, I did get a lot of really delicious food out of these science fairs. <laughs> But more important than the exciting events I went to and people I met, some of the results of my project are actually pretty significant and could prove very important in the effort to advance humanitarian demining around the world. First of all, the entire method is incredibly quick, cheap, and simple, all very important factors when it comes to the impoverished countries that need improved demining technology the most. Also. The most commonly used methods now, namely metal detectors and probing spikes, can't discriminate between landmines and clutter, resulting in a 99% false alarm rate, meaning that most of those humanitarian, scarce humanitarian demining funds are spent on trash collection. Using seismoacoustics, non-compliant clutter, such as rocks and shrapnel, wouldn't resonate clearly enough to be detected, so they would avoid detection completely and greatly reduce that false alarm rate. Lastly, and probably most significantly, one of the biggest issues with electrical demining technology is that it's rendered useless in wet soil. Seismoacoustics actually works really well in wet soil, meaning it could be a beautiful complement to other technology. And looking at the bigger picture, seismoacoustics is by no means the end-all be-all of landmine detection, but rather another unique tool to put in the landmine detection toolbox. Collaboration between people of all fields and all backgrounds, that is the key to making progress in the fight to rid the world of landmines. So where along the line of progress is my device now? Well, frankly, it's here, a TEDx team with all of you. My device has a long road ahead to travel down before it would be ready to be put to use in the field. Right now, it's simply an idea worth sharing, an idea that even in some small way, even if it's just raising awareness of these issues, could help change the world. A lot has happened in my life since I was a seven-year-old plotting world domination. Thankfully, I no longer spend my days scheming my rule as world empress. No, I know now that I don't want my life to be about world domination, but rather about world contribution. If anything, my research has taught me that you don't need to be an experienced adult with several degrees and fancy facilities. You don't even need to be a genius to make a difference. I most certainly am not a genius. I'm a crazy one. I chase crazy ideas, I work my butt off, and I never give up. I know that every one of you has the power to make a difference. You just have to believe in your abilities and worth, no matter what your age or situation in life. You have to be ready to work your butt off and fail over and over again and keep going, not despite, but because of that failure. And most important, you have to not be afraid to say yes to the crazy. Thank you.